Hello and welcome. We have with us Dr. Satyajit Rath from National Institute of Immunology to discuss what has been described as one of the big successes of the day, which is the AIDS vaccine trial which has been conducted in Thailand. Satyajit, the results don't seem to make out that there's been a huge success as has been painted in the papers. The figures seem to be relatively a small number of people and the difference is not, does not appear to be as significant. 31% success as it is being made out. So let's get some of the hype in perspective. This is a very, this was a very large trial. 16,000 people were involved, 8,000 approximately per group. Um, they have been tracked over six years. Um, they received six doses of vaccine of actually two different kinds of vaccine in what is called a prime boost regimen, meaning an initial set of doses of one vaccine followed by another set of boosters of a second vaccine, um, one dose a month over the first six months. At the end of six years, out of 8,000 in one group, there were 74 odd cases of uh, uh, HIV infection. In the other, there were 51 odd cases. Um, this doesn't sound like a dramatic difference and it isn't. If you calculate the statistical probability, it just falls below the p-value of 0 0.05, which by and large biologists use as an arbitrary cutoff to say whether a result is significant or not. Um, it's certainly not a usable vaccine. It's not a usable regimen. It doesn't provide uh, any dramatic degree of protection for the individual. And in that sense, this is not a vaccine ready to go into the market. But all that said, there is something interesting about the study. In all these years, over uh, now uh, over a decade of uh, trials of uh, HIV vaccines, this is the first time that there has been any difference between unvaccinated and vaccinated groups in a clinical trial. Um, with a virus as uh, adapted as HIV and uh, with a disease as uh, morbid, as draining on public health and as complex biologically as AIDS, this is a significant uh, finding. It at least says that what was possible in monkeys is possible in people. In other words, it is possible to reduce the risk of HIV infection through in vaccination. So in that sense, though it is not, as you said, usable or is certainly nowhere near being what can be made available to a population, what you are saying is it gives a certain kind of scientific direction or perhaps reinforces the belief that vaccines are possible which for 26 years has not really shown much of uh, Yes, proof. well, I'm, um, I'm sorry to sound like a wet blanket, but the fact is that it does um, two somewhat contradictory seeming things. On the one hand, it says that a vaccine may be possible because here is a small but detectable degree of protection. On the other hand, um, a less well publicized aspect of the study says something peculiarly paradoxical. One of the ideas in the trial was to see whether vaccination could reduce the amount of virus present in the body of people who were infected. So one stage of protection is people not getting infected at all. But another stage of protection is people who do get infected are able to control the amount of virus generated in their body. And curiously, initial reports at least, this is not a scientifically peer-reviewed publication as yet, so we don't know the details, but the um, reports that are around seem to suggest that of these 51 versus 74 people infected, the amount of virus on average present in their bodies is not different. Viral loads were same. Viral loads were approximately equivalent. Um, as you can see, the, that uh, infection frequency has declined, but virus load in the infected is the same, may be telling us mutually contradictory things. And resolving this paradox is going to take uh, quite some research before we come anywhere near uh, a usable vaccine. 
is it possible that, for instance, the 8,000 groups, after all, out of which we are talking about less than 100 people getting infected, it is possible that the 100 odd people that got infected had very different kinds of uh, social uh, behavior. And obviously, 8,000, 8,000 each, you don't have homogeneous sexual mores. So, is it possible this is actually a statistical artifact and not really uh, showing any significance in terms of vaccines? Well, our statistician friends uh, would go um, red in the face um, as they do every time this arbitrary probability value of 0 0.05 is brought up. Um, essentially, it's a convenience. It says that if there is a less than 5% probability that this happened by chance, then it's a significant result. But is there a possibility that it happened by chance? Yes. And the answer in this particular case seems to be that there is about a 3.9% or 4% probability that this happened by chance. Um, how do you show whether it happened by chance or not? You just do another trial. Now, whether somebody will go to the expense, because these are monumentally expensive trials, over $100 million, I suspect, uh, whether somebody will go to the trouble of doing exactly similar trials over and over again, or whether people will assume that this is a reasonable direction and will design uh, more prime boost uh, strategies for newer, more immunogenic vaccines and then try again is uh, anybody's guess. My guess would be uh, the latter. Uh, but it's only repeated trials with these or other combinations that is going to establish finally whether this was a uh, chance artifact at the 4% level or whether it's a real finding. So effectively the jury is still out on that but it's an interesting result as perhaps. So thanks Satyajit. We can come back uh, after this for another discussion, maybe sometime down the line, then more results are available.